This is the first in a series of fly fishing movies. The movie features some of the best flies and how to fish them. We've traveled to many different and fantastic locations to find different fishing situations. We follow experienced and skilled fly fisherman Morten Erland, a serious fly fisherman with in-depth knowledge on tactics, insects and fly tying. The movie covers both the insects and their imitations thoroughly and how to choose the right fly in the specific situation. Underwater cameras have documented the fish in their natural habitat. This movie is about dry fly fishing with a lot of great fishing, high spirits, but also the excitement, magic and beauty of fly fishing. It's the beginning of June by a small stream in Denmark and Ephemera Danica, the largest Danish mayfly, is hatching. It's found only in streams with good water quality and hatches from the end of May till well into June. On a hot sunny day like this, good hatches of the Danica can occur. It's an incredibly beautiful insect, which, like all other mayflies, only lives for a short period after hatching into adulthood. All mayflies show the same characteristics. Upright wings, a long slender body and two or three tail filaments. This mayfly spends the first two years of its life cycle as a nymph on the bottom of the river or stream. Some streams have huge populations and the nymphs are easy to find. The nymph is quite large and the sturdy legs are used to burrow in the soft bottom of the stream. When it hatches, a major metamorphosis takes place. Here's a dead mayfly and here, just beneath the surface, a nymph is making its way to the surface. In the surface film, the nymph transforms into an emerger and soon it will leave its nymphal shuck. When the wings are unfolded, it enters the done stage. After a few hours, it reaches its final spinner stage, where it lays its eggs. After reaching the done stage, mayflies live for only a few days, and when they die, they often land on the water, where they're called spent spinners. In all its stages, nymph, emerger, done, spinner and spent spinner, the mayfly is an attractive prey for trout. This fish is obviously not selective. As far as Morton can tell, it's feeding on emergers, duns and spinners. Oi. All the flies in this movie are Morton's own patterns. And here he chooses a simple imitation of the ephemera Danica dun that has the same characteristics as the natural.
This is how the trout sees the fly. Morton makes a downstream cast and apparently the presentation is perfect. But nothing happens and the fish continues to rise. It's impossible to tell why the fish refused the imitation but Morton moves downstream to make a new cast from a different angle. This is how the fish sees the fly. Even though Morton is using thin fluorocarbon the leader is highly visible from certain angles, but nearly invisible from other angles. Here the leader is easily visible, and here almost invisible. Here the sun reflects in the leader. The same thing happens again, clearly visible, and from a different angle, nearly invisible. We're looking up from where the fish lie near the bottom. A mayfly drifts past on the surface, followed by Morton's imitation. The thin leader is clearly visible from this point of view. But a trout has to react quickly when an insect floats past, especially so in low water and swift currents. Here, an example where the trout has no time to be suspicious about the leader. Previously, the trout refused the imitation and the leader might have been the reason. Morton now approaches the fish from a downstream position instead. It's hard to tell if a fish refuses the fly because of a wrong choice of fly or a poor presentation. We saw that the leader was very visible from some angles and nearly invisible from others. Morton is certain he's using the right fly, so he keeps fishing the same fly. An hour before sunset, and there's a good number of mayflies on the surface. There are no fish rising, but maybe an emerger imitation will work. As mentioned earlier, the emerger stage is where the nymph transforms into the adult insect. The nymphal shucks are found caught in the vegetation or floating on the surface. They're a sure sign of a hatch. The fly Morton is using is an imitation of a mayfly emerging from the nymphal shuck tied with CDC.
It's July and we're in Greenland. The summer's short and the rivers are low on nutrition. There are stationary and landlocked char in both rivers and lakes, but most of them are anadromous. They feed in nearby fjords and in July and August they migrate upriver to spawn and remain there throughout the winter. In these rough conditions, insect life is sparse, apart from the mosquitoes. Caddis are found all over the world, and they're one of the most important food items for trout. There are numerous species of caddis in all colors and sizes. Morton chooses an imitation that roughly matches the caddis we just saw by the river. Caddis are called both caddis and sedges. We choose to call them caddis. Morton calls this fly the speed caddis. It's tied with high floating materials and floats even when skated to imitate the characteristic movement of the caddis across the surface. A fish is rising right under the opposite bank. but the fly lands a little too far downstream. The water is shallow and the fish has only a narrow view of the surface. The fly has to be presented in the trout's field of view. Once in a while the fly is skated smoothly across the surface, just as is natural.
Lapland is a rough area with long cold winters and short intense summers, and yet the rivers are fairly prolific with insects. This is a Heptagenia mayfly, which is a common species in the mountainous regions. In the spinner stage, the insect has two tail filaments. The nymph has three. In these waters, an exact imitation is not necessary, and Morton's using an imitation in the same shape, size and colours as the natural. Morton's not seen rising fish, but this is a good spot for blind fishing with a dry fly. A backwater is created at the opposite bank with a lot of bubbles. Insects drifting by on the surface are often caught in the bubbles, and the fish take advantage of this as they regularly patrol these hot spots. A trout sucks down a fly, with a minimum of disturbance on the surface. Keeping a sharp eye on the fly is imperative between the many bubbles. <laughs> Morton's still using the same imitation of the heptagenia. There are no insects hatching and no fish rising, but earlier we saw fish rise to heptagenids. Morton is slowly making his way upstream, fishing along the opposite bank where the water's a little deeper.
we've moved to a nearby lake in Lapland. It's a grey and cool day with very little surface activity. On a day like this, a caddis imitation is a perfect choice. As we mentioned earlier, caddis are one of the most common species of aquatic insects and in mountain lakes like this, they're a very important food item for trout. Caddis make a distinct wake as they skate across the surface. Caddis have a well-defined, characteristic profile which is easy to imitate. In this situation, Morton uses an imitation with wings tied of thin foam. The foam wings make the fly float very well. Even on a grey, cool day as this, the fish will search for food both on and just beneath the surface. Our underwater camera reveals fish in the area. Morton's fishing a spot where he knows fish migrate past. The fly is simply cast out at right angles and retrieved in both long and short pulls. The fish are now active on the surface.
from caddis flies in Swedish Lapland to New Zealand, where the first insect modern catches in the insect seine is a caddis. The water's clear and shallow. The trout in these rivers are extremely shy, and it's imperative that the fly fisher seeks cover and keeps a good distance to the river. It's all about finding a fish and trying to catch it. This trout is slowly cruising around in a shallow pool. Morton cannot cover it from this position. The trout would see him immediately. So Morton moves downstream to approach the fish from the other side of the river. Morton has seen the fish rise and he has tied on a caddis imitation. This is his favourite fly for this kind of fishing. He calls it best caddis. It's a sparsely dressed and very lively imitation, which is especially good for shy fish in shallow, clear water. Morton has positioned himself in the shadow of the tree and there's little risk of the fish seeing him and being spooked from this position. Morton is using a wiggle cast to get a longer, drag-free drift. The CDC makes the fly float well, even in this fast current. This is the fly from the trout's point of view. Maybe you missed the fly. Let's see it again in slow motion. Even in very clear water, the trout must have acute vision and fast reactions. And in shallow water, or when holding high in the water, it has to react even faster. The trout's window is quite small when holding close to the surface. The fish is cruising in the shallow pool and Morton's constantly trying to cast to where he thinks the fish will be. He's using a six meter long leader in order not to spook the fish.
you. We've placed an underwater camera in a pool where we previously saw fish searching for food. This fish is very selective. At the moment, it seems focused on very small mayflies, despite the fact that there are other and larger insects on the surface too. Gobbling them down, isn't he? It's amazing. Morton tries with a very small mayfly imitation. But the fish is very shy and swims away slowly as soon as the fly line lands on the water. This type of fishing requires that the fisherman is constantly on the move upstream looking for fish. It's not all fish that will take a fly and some will spook and in other cases the presentation fails. Or maybe you're simply using the wrong fly. Yeah. He's right out there, right on the line. Morton has spotted a trout in the river. Oh, 
That was a light colored. Maybe that was one of those small caddis. The fish is holding quite far out, and it is eating different insects. Morton first attempts with a mayfly emerger. But the fish rises to an insect right next to Morton's imitation. So Morton tries a different fly, a caddis emerger. The trout rose just before Morton's fly passed over it. Yes, got it. No. Whoa! What a take! Yeah! Oh. Whoa! What a fish! Look at this fish, man. The River Traun is in southern Germany, close to the Austrian border, and just one of several beautiful rivers in the area. The Traun is stocked with both rainbow and brown trout, but both species spawn in the river as well, so there's also a natural population. All the fish are in perfect condition, due to the rich insect life in the river providing food all year round. The fish feed almost exclusively on insects, and both brown trout and rainbow trout grow to a significant size in this river. Morton is fishing a stretch with a swift current. 
Along the opposite bank, the water's deep and Morton has spotted several fish rising. There are a good number of blue-winged olive mayflies on the water. They're called blue-winged olive because of the bluish wings and the olive body. It's a relatively small mayfly, but as it often hatches in good numbers, it often brings up even the bigger fish. At dusk, the blue-winged olive hatch can provide good fishing. Morton chooses a size 16 parachute-style imitation. It's not an exact imitation, but it leaves a significant footprint on the surface and the profile well matches the natural. To get long drifts, Morton's placed himself close to the deep water and casts directly upstream. He moves slowly upstream, one step at a time. Good line control is important in this swift current. The line must be retrieved and coiled up constantly in order to set the hook when the fish takes the fly. The next day we fish a different stretch. Morton has spotted a few rising fish, but no insects on the surface. The fish are probably rising to emergers, so Morton ties on his blue-winged olive emerger that floats right in the film.
Morton stays in the shallow water and moves slowly downstream, whilst casting upstream at an angle. We've had many wonderful experiences at many totally different locations during this movie. We've tried to show the many sides of dry fly fishing and just a few of the insects and flies important to the dry fly fisher. All this can be used for inspiration for your own future fishing trips. Mm -hmm.